check it out. Fan here for another weekly update. Uh, so, uh, what's new? Well, obviously, I'm back from Eurosport DC that was this past weekend. Lots and lots of fun, as you can see from the videos. If you haven't checked them out already, go check them out. Lots of sweet exotic footage, and uh, there'll be more videos to come as well. And uh, so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So what's new with the BRZ this week? Well, all the uh, service and stuff is still holding up well. The tail light condensation hasn't come back. We had a lot of really heavy rains this past week and no signs of any condensation at all. So it looks like the sealant is uh, working so far. And uh, yeah, the only other thing new about the BRZ is I ordered my vanity plate. And uh, they say it takes between eight and 10 weeks, but I've seen a lot of people get it a lot faster than that. So hopefully it won't be too much longer before it arrives. Um, I decided to just go with WRX fan. That's my first choice at least. And according to their database, it hasn't been taken yet. So hopefully I'll be able to get WRX fan. And that way, whenever you guys see me out and about, you'll know it's me, you can wave and uh, you know I can show you the car and stuff. So uh, yeah, that's really the only thing new with the BRZ. Uh, one thing though that a lot of people have been asking about uh, this past week, they wanted me to talk about the stereo in this car and I've had questions a lot recently about the stereo and I've answered in the comments a few times to a few different people what I think about the stereo in this car and if you go back and actually look at my limited you know, in-depth tour that I did of this car back whenever I first got it about a year ago, I took you through all the stereo functions and you can look in that video and see exactly what everything does, how the screen works, how responsive the touch screen is and all that. Um, but I'll go ahead and talk about a little bit of, you know, since I've been using it for a year, what it's like. And um, it's definitely not a responsive touch screen. It's old school touch. Don't expect it to react the same way as your Android phone or your iPhone would because this is slow. I mean, you know, you hit a button on here, you probably have to hit it twice before you actually get it to do what you're telling it to do. Um, it's an eight speaker sound system. You have uh, two speakers on each side up here. You have one in each of the doors and then you have one on each side of the back seat. So eight speakers you would think is pretty good, but for some reason this head unit is really underpowered. And even before I had the exhaust system, you really have to turn up the stereo a lot to get sound. It's It varies depending on what source you're using. Like whenever I'm doing Bluetooth streaming through my iPhone, I have to, like if I'm on the highway, you know, with the exhaust, windows down and everything, to hear the stereo, I need to crank it up to probably about 80 or 90 percent volume before I can actually like really get a good sense of what I'm hearing. And uh, if I'm driving with the windows up like this, I normally would have it up about halfway just for something like this. So it's very, very underpowered. I've actually never played a CD through here, so I'm not sure how, if CD audio quality is higher so that you don't have to turn it up as much, but radio is the same way, you really have to crank it up. Whereas in the Legacy, it would go up to like 35 and I would only turn it up to like eight or nine and it'd be really loud. This one is completely different. You really gotta crank it up if you wanna hear it. And uh, so, I mean, you know, some people are just swapping out head units. Some people are putting better speakers in. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is because I'm not an audio guy, but um, all I know is it's really underpowered. And uh, I didn't buy this car for a sweet stereo system, so I don't really care. But I mean, it is, uh, it's a pretty crappy stereo. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, it's one of the weaker points of the car for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's not bad though, really, you can easily replace it. I mean, this is a double din, basic size head unit. Just pull it out, go to Best Buy, buy whatever you want, throw it in here and you're good. It's really an easy fix. Speakers are another easy fix. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. So, you know, I wouldn't hold that against the BRZ or the FRS, you know, do whatever you want with it and it's an easy mod. So, uh, but yeah, the stereo that comes with this car is not spectacular, but I'm not an audiophile, so, for me, I don't really care. It does its job, it's decent enough audio quality, and it's not embarrassing whenever I have passengers in the car and stuff, so it's good enough for me. So now I'll send it over to uh, me in the news. 
Right, so for this week in automotive news, the first thing I want to talk about is actually for all of you that are excited about the Mercedes CLA coming to North America, they just started production. According to my one friend who has an order in, he just got his production number and it officially has a spot on the line now. So they're starting to produce these and so they'll be here soon enough. I think, you know, late summer, early fall is the expected arrival for the CLA and I'll be really excited to start seeing this beautiful car showing up all over the United States and uh, of course my friend's really excited to get his as well so that'll be cool. So one piece of interesting news that actually was just reported today was that the incoming Toyota chairman wants a Supra successor. Uh, this is obviously just a rumor as far as what's actually going to happen. I mean Supra successors have been talked about many many times over the past few years but I think now that you know the FRS and the BRZ really have paid off for Toyota and it's working out and they realize that oh hey maybe it's good to make sports cars instead of just boring Camrys all the time so I think that you know they might try and start getting into the sports car business here again a little bit and between Toyota and BMW's partnership and things like that I'm hoping that you know maybe BMW will give a little bit of an influence put a little M3 into this new Supra, that would be amazing. But uh, anyway, so yeah, hopefully this Toyota chairman is uh, the guy that it takes to really finally push Toyota over the edge and start developing an actual Supra successor, because we've been waiting way too long for that. So hopefully uh, that happens. And another thing, you guys all know that I love the Mustang, and the 2015 Mustang is currently under development, being engineered and all that kind of stuff, and the prototype was just spotted on the streets the past few days, and uh, it's obviously very, very camouflaged up and stuff, but you can tell from the pictures that this car is actually going to be smaller than the previous Mustang, the current Mustang, and to me that's good news because that's one of the things that I didn't like about the current Mustang is that it was just enormously big. It, it feels big. I mean the cabin's not huge, but there's a huge long hood that's really high up and it's just it feels like a big car. And this one also has a long hood, but it looks like it's a little bit lower, um, so it'll give it a more low slung, you know, modern kind of look to it. And uh, I mean, you can't see much, but from what you can see, it has aggressive side skirts. Uh, it looks like it has a body line that resembles the EVOS that we saw uh, in concept form. So, the only thing that makes me nervous is it looks like this Mustang has some kind of horizontal headlamps, and I'm a big fan of the retro Mustang styling. A lot of people will say it's old, boring, you know, get on with modern stuff now, and looks like Ford might be finally getting on with the modern stuff which makes me nervous because you can't go wrong with classic styling in my opinion so anytime you try and go radically new and crazy it might turn out to be a flop I mean they said they're not going to screw the Mustang up because it's a Mustang and there's no room for mistakes here but uh you know I'm just hoping they don't make a Ford Fusion two-door out of the Mustang um you know a lot of people love the way the Fusion looks. It's a poor man's Aston Martin, and uh, as long as people don't want the new Mustang to be a poor man's Vanquish, you know, I'll be fine. I still want it to be a muscle car, and uh, so hopefully this car doesn't disappoint, but <laughs> I'm pretty nervous about it. And also, uh, the last thing along the same Mustang lines is there are reports now that the new SVT Mustang, you know, the Shelby Cobra replacement here, for 2015 isn't going to use the Shelby name anymore. As you all know, you know, Carroll Shelby is now deceased and so I think the Ford engineers don't want to put his name on a car that he didn't help develop, uh, which I respect. That's really cool. But uh, they're saying that it might actually be a naturally aspirated car as well this time. So they might get rid of the supercharger and uh, go with a name that's familiar with Ford enthusiasts, they say, such as Cobra, probably, is what they'll go with. So, Mustang Cobra, no more Shelby GT500s, which is really sad. And for you collectors out there, grab a 2014 Shelby GT500 while you can, because that was the last car that Carroll Shelby worked on. The probably may, might be the last supercharged, you know, Mustang from the factory. Might be the highest producing Mustang from the factory that we'll see here in the future. So uh, I know if I had the money right now, I would totally be over a GT500 just for the collector aspect and the fact that I love Mustang. So for all you investors out there, grab a 2014 Shelby GT500, keep it, you know, really clean, low mileage, and, uh, you know, in 40 or 50 years, you'll probably have a gold mine on your hands, I think. Uh, so yeah, a um, little bit of a sad news, but it'll be interesting to see what they do with this new direction with the new Cobra that they'll be coming out with. 
So yeah, guys, that's it for the news this week. Not a whole lot to talk about, but uh, so I'll send it back to me in the car. So yeah, guys, that's uh, it for this week's update video. So I'll leave you with a nice little acceleration like I always do. And I'll turn the windows down this time so you can actually read.